Hello, so this video is on circling. It's always a worrying neurological sign when it's seen, but what does it mean? Well, at its worst, it's either a sign of forebrain disease or perhaps it's a disorder of the balance apparatus, which we call vestibular disease. In this video, I'm going to take you through the various causes of circling and uh, empower you with the tools of how to investigate that with your uh, clinical examination skills and determine where in the brain or the ear this problem is coming from. So what causes circling and how can we make sense of it? The main causes of circling are forebrain disease, vestibular disease, and we can also see some stereotypic behaviours. So in forebrain disease, this is said to be an imbalance of forebrain dopamine systems, especially in the nigrostriatal area. Um, and it's thought to be that the animal will circle away from the hemisphere with higher striatal dopaminergic transmission. That's sometimes a little bit up for the debate, but for those studying their board exams, that's probably the best um, statement to make at this time. Importantly, though, for those general practitioners um, who are perhaps not so interested in, uh, in dopamine systems, the important message is that the animal will always circle towards the lesion. So if a, there is a problem in the right forebrain, then the animal could circle to the, uh, towards the right. In vestibular disease, um, this means disease of the vestibular system, the balance system, in the inner ear or in the brainstem or cerebellum where that uh, information is integrated. And again, they will circle towards the lesion. And this is due to unopposed function of the normal side, meaning that they tend to veer towards the, uh, the abnormal side. And behavioural um, stereotypic behaviours, um, they have a tendency to spin and it's linked to emotional arousal. They usually have a preferred direction. Their balance is unaffected and they can walk in a straight line. And it's actually absolutely completely different to the other types of circling. But I include it because uh, when owners and vets see this type of stereotypic spinning, uh, it's, it's obviously very concerning that the animal may have a more uh, important structural brain disease. So localization is key with circling. And the first thing to note, of course, is the direction of the circling, because as I've said before, they always circle towards the side of the lesion. Neurological examination cannot get simpler than that. You know instantly the side of the problem, because if they're circling anticlockwise, then the, the lesion is, is on the left. Next question to ask yourself is, does the animal look like they could fall? So uh, in this animal here, compared to uh, the uh, animal here, or cat here, we can see that the, the white um, uh, tortoiseshell cat, um, white ginger cat, is uh, really circling in a very coordinated manner. Doesn't look like it's fall, going to fall. Where is this um, blue cat here does look very unsteady. And so this shows the two different types of circling, forebrain versus vestibular. So in forebrain, they often will circle in a very coordinated looking fashion. Whereas vestibular, they look like they're leaning to the side and they're about to fall over. So the circling in vestibular disease is quite different from that circling in the forebrain disease. Uh, they're uh, typically veering to one side, as I say, because the normal vestibular apparatus is not uh, being opposed. And they're often leaning to the same side as they are circling, and they usually have a head tilt to the same side as they're circling. And of course, they may have additional vestibular signs, such as nystagmus, as in this uh, cat here. So examples of circling due to vestibular disease, so diseases of the inner ear. So this is otitis media interna, represented in two different ways, um, uh, 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 with one of them here on the uh, 
um, here with the MRI scan and this obviously with a radiograph. MRI scan is really just represented to show you the beautiful anatomy here. So this is the brainstem, this is the cerebellum. We see the nerve, the vestibular nerve coming out here. This is the inner ear. And then this is the tympanic bulla and this is the material within this uh, tympanic bulla. And here a different cat, but represented in an open mouth radiograph. We can, we can see that this tympanic bulla here is full of air, whereas this one is full of, uh, of fluid. So uh, both of these cats presented with left-sided vestibular disease uh, with no other deficits. Contrast is a central cause of vestibular disease. And this MRI scan here, we can see some uh, dysfunction um, uh, in the uh, cerebellar and cerebellar peduncle area. Uh, and this uh, dog uh, presented with left-sided vestibular disease and left-sided proprioceptor de de deficits and was also obtunded. Um, and uh, the diagnosis in this wasn't confirmed. It was thought to either be some kind of neoplastic process such as lymphoma or a CNS inflammatory disease. So further localization of vestibular disease is dependent on the other associated neurological deficits if, if there are any. And that's really a, an entire different lecture by itself. But that's um, really distinguishing between central vestibular disease and peripheral vestibular disease. We're circling in forebrain disease. Uh, the animal is often quite driven. Um, they continue to walk in circles. They are, uh, seem unable to spot, stop. They often seem like they just want to keep, uh, keep walking, even though they may be exhausted. And this is forebrain on the right side. And there's no signs of leaning. Um, there's no head tilt and there's no evidence of, of um, poor balance. So I'm going to give you a handy hint here um, for neurolocalization of forebrain disease. I'm going to like you to remember four by four. So four brain signs with four brain signs. The first is circling towards the lesion. The next is proprioceptive deficits and paresis opposite side to the problem. This is because you have decussation. So uh, uh, sensory information from this foot um, it, uh, passes up the spinal cord and that proprioceptive information goes into the brain and then decussates after the level of the, uh, of the brainstem to the opposite, the contralateral cerebral cortex. And so the deficits are on the opposite side to the circling. Um, and you can see here this knuckling tendency in this in this uh, uh, foot and it was normal on this side. And then we can also have, depending on the location of the problems, a central blindness, which just means a blindness due to a uh, lesion in the visual pathways. And so in this dog it had uh, an absent menace response on the left hand side. But uh, its eye was normal and so there was no damage to the uh, pathways associated with uh, reflex to the light, the pillory light reflex. Um, and so it was, um, it was determined to be a central uh, blindness. And the fourth sign is that they are obtunded. Um, so they are, um, have a depressed mental status, their behaviour may be changed. Often in re retrospect, the owner may say, well, they've been quieter or I thought they've aged a lot in the last few weeks. So um, uh, examples of forebrain disease. This was actually an acute onset uh, uh, example. Um, this was an infarct to the left caudate nucleus. So, so here, these are all images representing the same lesion, T2 weighted flare and uh, diffusion weighted image. And uh, it was also affected in the internal capsule. And it was the dog was presented with acute onset, left sided circling, obtundation and right sided postural deficits. And he interestingly had a right visual neglect. The uh, vision was intact, but the dog wasn't responding to anything uh, on its right side, um, which uh, is reported in, in chordate lobe uh, um, lesions. And we can just see that there. And this is another example. This is a suspected glioma a type of brain tumour. It's in the right thalamus. And the dog was presented with acute onset right circling, left sided postural deficits. But the owner was also reporting that there was this two month history of um, um, slowing down. You can see this rather nasty cystic mass within the thalamic area here.
So I'd like us to play forebrain or vestibular. So this is where you get to test your own ability. So here is the first one. I'd like you to tell me, is this circling forebrain or vestibular? Yep, it's left-sided vestibular, so we're turning to the left, and the dog is also leaning to the left, there's a head tilt to the left, and the dog has falling and poor balance. So see how simple it is uh, that uh, for telling the difference between the two. Vestibular is associated with balance problems. Okay, here's your next one. Is it forebrain or vestibular? Yep, this is right forebrain, so it's turning to the right. There's no balance problems. The cat is obviously depressed, obtunded, and the cat was also blind on the left with um, left-sided uh, postural deficits. So if you spotted that, you get bonus points. If you spotted that, uh, that the cat failed to avoid this obstacle right there uh, because he was blind on the left. And here is our next one. Is it forebrain? or vestibular. Yes, this is left vestibular. Dog is leaning, has a head tilt, is falling and poor balance. But perhaps you thought this was a little bit of a trickier one. You get bonus points if you spotted that the head tilt and the lean was on the right opposite to my, my, what might be expected. And you can double your points if you spotted that the dog had a hypermetric gait on the right side, especially the right fore. If you don't know what I mean when I say hypermetric gait, don't worry. We're going to be doing this in another video at some point. You get triple points if you localise this as a paradoxical vestibular syndrome involving the left cerebellum. So well done. Again, if you don't know what I mean with that, don't worry. There'll be another video eventually that will go through these, um, these more complicated uh, uh, neurological localizations. So next, I'd like to concentrate on behavioural stereotypical sp uh, spinning. So um, often these dogs will have this, or cats will have this tendency from a very young age. Although uh, in many animals, I have to say that their early environment is often not known. Uh, it seems to be much more common in rescue animals, and there's probably a reason for that. Importantly, these dogs can run and walk in a straight line when they want to. And, and later in this video, just see very briefly that the owner interrupts the dog and the dog stops immediately and then looks for the next thing. Um, their balance and their jumping ability is absolutely normal. So in forebrain disease, they're just unable to stop the circling. In vestibular disease, obviously, that they will have an affected balance. They tend to spin more when they're emotionally aroused or when they start an activity. Um, for example, some animals might do a couple of spins before walking off. They usually have a side preference and they may have other behavioural problems. And it's a very variable um, issue and it may not even be a, pr a, a problem. Here's another example. This is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel with a compensated hydrocephalus, but he has severe syringomyelia. And he has this tendency for a single circle uh, when he starts uh, walking. Uh, and you may argue with this, this dog that um, uh, with his brain disease, uh, that this is probably forebrain related and it might be, uh, but he also does this. This tail chasing, tail catching, which is a much more um, stereotypical behavior um, that uh, you think has other, uh, other issues. You do see comparable syndromes in, in humans. I just pulled a, did a search for this and pulled a couple off the internet recently. Um, uh, and people with this, if you sort of read some of these uh, issues that they're off, also quite young people. 
Um, and they describe that they, they, this helps them relieve stress. They feel good when they're doing it and they feel frustrated when they're prevented from doing it. And you may think, why am I looking at this uh, syndromes in humans? Well, I think it helps to understand uh, what the dogs are getting out of it. Uh, no case is identical. Some dogs, as I say, like um, that uh, cavalier may actually have some structural brain disease that you think may have predisposed of it. Um, some may have some behavioural problems uh, related to anxiety and become easily frustrated. And some of them may be completely benign and just a cute quirk. A quirk. This, uh, this little vehicle here used to follow this vehicle to work practically every single day. And, uh, and in it was this lovely Springer Spaniel. And uh, he was always spinning in the same direction, with the, presumably with the excitement of, of going to work, which I thought was absolutely adorable. And obviously there's nothing wrong uh, with this dog at all. He's just excited and, and quite a, a driven uh, dog. But as a working dog, he may be predisposed to uh, getting behavioural problems if he's not in the right uh, environment and he may become uh, easily frustrated if he's not uh, given the right environment. So you need to deal with each case on an individual basis. Uh, investigate and manage the uh, triggers if spinning is impacting the dog's quality of life and deal with any associated disease. For example, it may be that the animal has some other issues going on. For example, if they're painful, then that's going to uh, uh, impact their emotional health uh, and make them more likely to engage in the behavior. And so you may um, uh, need to do some investigation and really concentrate on improving that emotional health. And that indeed is the subject of uh, another uh, lecture entirely. Uh, so I hope that this has helped demystify circling for you and given you some confidence when you see your next case with this problem.